Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Pitovich here. It's 11 a.m. So let's do uh, a good update here on our winter storm. We're now probably about 12 to 13 hours away from the first precip falling in the area. And I got a pretty good handle on how this thing's going to unfold. Uh, the one thing I will tell you is please, please focus on ice. This whole time, everybody I go to and hear is like, we're getting snow, we're getting snow. Here's the thing. In the Charlotte metro area, this is not a snowstorm. This is a winter storm. This is going to be ice. Everything your app, Siri, Dark Sky, Weather Channel, all that stuff's been telling you for days and days and days about huge tolls. It's absolutely not true, okay? This is about ice. We could see a little bit of snow. Maybe 10, 20% of this storm is going to be snow. 80, 90% of this is going to be sleet or ice. So that's really what I want to focus on because the ice threat, if anything, just looks like it's increasing for our area. So here's the setup right now. I'll show you the wider view of this thing. You see the storm. It's now developing to our west. We're getting the perfect setup here for what we call cold air damming. If you're not familiar with that, this is something very unique in the Carolinas. Cold air gets wedged up against the mountains, but it's not deep cold air. It's shallow. It's down near the ground level, and that's problematic because when these storms develop very strongly like this one is to our west, it pushes this cold, dry air to the surface. So the one thing I'm watching, a couple things. The track of the low is going to be really important. But one of the other things are going to be the dew points. So temperatures to our north, ooh, that's pretty cold. We've got teens, single digits, and below zero readings in New England. That's the heart of the high pressure system that's going to be pushing down. It's actually coming out of Canada and there. But one of the things to watch for are the dew point temperatures. Look at these dew point temperatures, single digits and teens. If I see tonight and today, honestly, these advecting or being transported into the Carolinas, that's going to set the stage for some epic ice because evaporative cooling, cold air at the surface combined with this strong storm coming in from the west is really going to pose some big issues. The low, there's one low there, there's one low here. They're going to combine, okay? Where is that going to happen? That's the question mark. If it's a little further south, that means locked in colder air. A little further to the north, that's going to pull in much warmer air. So let me show you how this is going to unfold. So here's a look at this thing developing here. You see it off towards the west. Now the key part will be any precipitation that comes in early. This is this afternoon, probably Virg. It's going to evaporate, but the mountains could see some snow flurries developing this afternoon. As we go through time, you see it developing, becoming a pretty big system. And again, the first real, I think, batches of precipitation, probably after midnight, I'm thinking 2 a.m., we start to see it move in. It may start as a little bit of snow. I, I know that went quick. Let me just pause that and go back to the beginning here. We'll play this through. I don't know why I did that. That was kind of weird. Uh, but we'll see this kind of move in from the west, and that's going to set the stage for this basically moving in pretty quickly overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning. We'll set that up. You see it moving in. Okay, so maybe some snow at the start. Might be a burst of snow, probably more likely sleet. But watch this transition to freezing rain and sleet very quickly. And there's going to be a sharp cutoff. Heavy snow, heavy sleet, heavy freezing rain, and even some rain sneaking into the southeastern parts of our area. Look how close the rain line gets in here. The, the temperatures will be key here. And the, the reason the temperatures will be key is this might be showing rain on the model, but the surface temperatures might be below freezing as this moves through. And then maybe a, a little bit of snow on the tail end. So let me pull up our future cast. So here's a look at our future cast. And the reason I like showing this, I'm going to show you the temperatures at the same time here. So we'll get a good idea on, you know, where the temperatures are here. So we'll play this out a little bit. We'll go through time. And you see, you know, early in the morning, here comes the precipitation. We're in the 30s, but watch the temperature fall into the 20s. So by 7 a.m., we're in the mid to upper 20s. And again, that's primarily ice, sleet or freezing rain. Now, the warm air tries to surge in here in the middle of the afternoon. Notice temperatures... Greens, uh, uh, Wadesboro, maybe to Rockingham, try to sneak above freezing. If that happens, that would be rain, but it's really close. In Charlotte, we never really crack the freezing mark, which is really problematic, which means this stays frozen or freezing on the way down. And then there's that little burst of snow at the end. So what does that mean for totals? Well, I do have some updated totals, and I want to show you those real quickly. So I've made some adjustments to our ice map, and I'm actually going to bring the heart of the ice pretty much right over the state line, um, a quarter to a half an inch, and I'm nudging some ice further northwest. Um, this just looks to be the trend in the guidance, and that means you've got to push the snow back a little bit as well. So basically, I had Charlotte in one to two. I think it's more going to be closer to an inch, maybe one to two in northern Mech, 
but most of the area is going to be around an, a half an inch to an inch and that could be sleet or snow together the heavier snow really confined to the mountains some of these areas are going to have more mixing which is going to reduce your snow total so every hour of sleet or even freezing rain that mixes in that really lowers down the amount of snow when we look at the impacts a couple things to notice um, the red areas are a little less but notice the red in south charlotte and even got some red you can't see it but it's under monroe and wadesboro why is that popping up in our impact graphics because we're expecting more significant icing issues here so there will be pockets where we will have some really heavy freezing rain that could last for a long time and if that's the case that's going to set the stage for you know potentially significant ice threat that could last for a while so this is kind of the setup folks the best snow chances are going to be confined to the mountains and foothills while most areas in the piedmont are going to see a mix it is not going to be a snowstorm for the piedmont i cannot emphasize this enough this is going to be a sleet and ice event um, if you see flakes and snows for a little bit be very happy because that's going to reduce the overall impacts the problem is these impacts are it'd be pretty tremendous here so here's a look we'll start north of interstate 40 into the mountains mainly snow but some sleet light glaze snow and ice covered roads so again we're talking primarily snow and sleet in these areas that will keep the threat for tree and you know, power outages pretty limited but as you get around the charlotte area in the piedmont this includes all the counties in the piedmont metro Lina, south carolina north carolina you know basically uh, the i-85 corridor if you will with counties on either side you're looking at primarily sleet and freezing rain uh, very little snow is going to mix in probably at the very beginning while most of us are sleeping and then the travel is going to be hazardous especially bridges and overpasses i think this combination especially with that cold air at the surface will cause bridges and overpasses to be slick i think the roads in some areas could be okay because the ground's a little bit warmer and we've been treating with a lot of brine but all, anything elevated any surface branches tree limbs cars rooftops all that stuff can be encrusted in ice and that's why the power outage is going to be the highest with this event so anything that could change in the next 24 or i say 12 hours would be any subtle shift in the track and watching that warm nose that pocket of warm air loft how strong is it how far inland does it get and how long does it last if it's transitory it's in and out quickly we could see a lot of fluctuations between sleet and freezing rain if it's a little stronger we could see more consistent freezing rain but really the emphasis overall and i cannot say this enough and stress this enough the focus has got to be on ice not with snow i know people want snow their apps and everything else was telling them snow for weeks we were not telling you snow we were saying maybe a little bit of snow but primarily ice the snow chances for this thing were very tiny to begin with in that low one to two inch range and even that is looking a little bit high honestly at this point for the area so please be prepared for icy conditions power outages hope we don't see that significant ice set up because that would mean extended power outages but duke power is preparing that way dot is preparing it this way um, it's just not me folks this is going to be an ice event that people are worried about so charge everything up have some backup power and heating sources just in case and hopefully we'll get through this just fine and long term hey we've got other opportunities down the road this pattern's not going away it's pretty cold doesn't mean we're going to see snow in the future but we might have more opportunities with systems like this coming up in the next seven to ten days of course i will post updates throughout the day and i will post these updated maps throughout the afternoon i will be on tonight we'll do a digital show online at six and we'll be on the air tonight at 11. have a great saturday we'll get ready for the system